Hello everybody, this is Tanya. This evening I was in the mood for some pumpkin pie, but since I don't really care for crust, not just on the pumpkin pie, on anything, I'm not really uh, that particular about the crust, I can take it or leave it. So I decided to look and see what the ingredients were on the um, Libby's Pure Pumpkin. And so the ingredients on here for the famous let me turn around so you can see it. Okay, for their famous pumpkin pie, it's one can of pumpkin, one half cups of carnation evaporated milk. Notice they're naming the brand, so we're going to ignore that. Uh, three fourth cups of uh, sugar, one half cup of salt, not one half cup, one half teaspoon of salt. One teaspoon of cinnamon, one teaspoon of ginger, one teaspoon of clove, two large eggs, and a nine inch deep dish pie shell. Okay, that's what it's calling for if you're doing the classic or the famous pumpkin pie. They have another one on here they're calling the new fashioned pumpkin pie, which calls for one can of pumpkin puree, one cup of evaporated milk, um, Sweet and condensed milk, one half teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of cinnamon, one teaspoon of ginger, one, uh, I'm sorry, one half teaspoon of ginger, one half teaspoon of clove, two eggs, and of course a pie shell. Okay, the pie shell, like I said, is out. Okay, and the cinnamon, clove, and ginger, that's all in pumpkin pie spice. And this is the pumpkin pie spice Sandra made. So I'll be using this instead of those individual ingredients. And instead of um, evaporated milk, I have some half and half. So I'll be using that. You use what you have, okay? <laughs> I have some um, evaporated milk that I did make or process, um, which I got the um, procedure from Homestead Heart. And if you're interested in it, I will link it in the description so that you can go look at that if you want to. But I'm not using it. I'm saving that because I only have, um, I think I have two um, pint size jars left. So I'm not gonna use this on this, use that on this. Especially since I have this milk, I'm not doing anything else with it. I need to use it up, okay? And so what I'm going to do it's, I'm just going to combine everything in my bowl and stir it up. So I'll be back once I have everything in the pool. Okay. Well, I guess I can go ahead and do it while you're watching. Because I already have this. Oops. Open. I just to, everything just dump. It's a dump method. And of course, you know, if you're using sweet and condensed milk, don't add sugar. It's going to be super sweet. The sweet and condensed milk is super sweet as it is. So you don't need any sugar. So I might be taken to the hospital because you're being a diabetic home. And then here's my pumpkin. I'm just dumping everything in here. I'm gonna mix it all up. Get all that. Get as much as I can get out. Because like I heard somebody say one time you paid for it. Make sure you get it. Especially if you buy the Libix brand. Because this is like $2 and some change per can. Whereas if you buy the store brand, I think it's like 90 something cents. So that's why you want to definitely get it all. 
Leave nobody behind. And I am going to do the half a teaspoon of salt. You know, salt always brings out the sweetness of anything. Leave that out so I won't knock that over. Uh, let's see. I can crack my eggs in this. I should have cracked it in that first, but anyway, whatever. It's all the same. Okay, sorry about that. My phone wrong. So I have one egg in here. Now, see, this, you always want to crack your eggs in something separate so you won't mess up whatever it is you're cooking. Just in case you have a bad egg. And like I said, the way I'm doing this, instead of one and a half cups of milk, I'm using one cup of milk. I just shook it up because sometimes stuff like this settles. Pour that in there. Now, here's my seasoning. Y'all know how I feel about seasoning. This calls for one teaspoon of ground cinnamon. And since everything is in here, I'm just going to do it. Oh, and this is a half teaspoon, by the way. I'm just doing a heaping. Teaspoon of pumpkin spice. And just so you know, I'm also adding some nutmeg because I grew up with my grandmother and my mom using nutmeg whenever they cook pie. So, nutmeg always goes in our pie. And yep, I'm gonna put a teaspoon of nutmeg in there too, because I like nutmeg. If you don't like nutmeg, don't use it. And it doesn't call for it on the recipe. That's a Tanya thing, okay? And so now, we just have to mix this together. And once I get it together, this is going to go into my 8x8 eight eight, my eight by eight dish, which I have already sprayed it. So it's just going to go in there, and we're going to stick it in the oven. I have my oven preheated at 350 degrees. Now, if you go by the directions, if you make it according to what they, they say, then this is actually, uh, you're supposed to preheat your oven at 425 degrees. Let it cook for 15 minutes at 425 then you reduce it to 350 and let it cook for 30 to 40 minutes or until um, it's done or, or you stick a knife or something and it comes out clean. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and stir this up. And I will come back and let you see what it looks like once I get it in my bowl or in my pan. So. All right, so I have my mixture combined. And we're just going to pour this into the dish. Get that a little bit that's left in there out. I need a spatula, sorry about that. Sorry about the sound. All right. Now, since this is so full, as you can tell, it's full. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on a um, cookie sheet and put some parchment paper underneath it just in case it overflows. 
because I'm treating this like it's a souffle. And I know most of the time when you're cooking pies and stuff of this nature, they will, what's the word I'm looking for? They will expand. Okay. So I just want to make sure it doesn't expand in the oven and leave me something to have to clean up. So I will be putting this in, like I said, I'll be putting this on a cooking sheet with parchment paper. I'm cook, uh, cooking it at 350 degrees and I'm going to let it cook for, I'm going to say at least 30, or I'm, we're going to start with 30 minutes. Okay. It's going to take longer than that. I already know it's going to take longer than that. But we're going we're gonna to start with 30 minutes. No, we just said 40 minutes because it's going to take longer than that. Um, so we're going to start with 40 minutes and then engage it from there. All right. So I'll see you when this comes out and I'll let you know how long it took. All righty. So it's been about 70 minutes. That's how long I let this cook because I put it in for, like I said, for 40 minutes. Then I gave it an additional 20 and you when I came back at 20, it looks like I mean it still need a little bit longer. So I gave it another 10 minutes. So that's 70 minutes. Uh, I'm going to let this sit here um, for, I don't know, about an hour, hour and a half to cool down a little bit before I dig into it. And uh, again, I'm treating this as a souffle, but this is actually the um, recipe on the Libby's can for their uh, fashion, you know, fashion famous pumpkin pie. I think that's what they called it. Anyway, I threw the can away, so I don't remember. Anyway, so like I said, I'm treating it as a souffle because I guess technically anything, any dessert you cook, that requires a crust that you don't use a crust would be considered a souffle, especially if it's got a custard to go to. I don't know. That's Tanya's, that's Tanya's logic. So I'm calling it a souffle. So that's what we're going with. But anyway, just wanted to share this with you. Um, it smells delicious. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be good. But if it's not good, I'll let you know. If you don't hear from me, then you know it was good. Okay? All right. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and leave a legacy. And by the way, I will put the ingredients that I put in this in the description in case you're interested in making one on your own. All right. See you in the next video. Bye.